Good morning, scholars. Today is Thursday, April 30th, 2020. Scholars, you know we've been working on our problems of the day where we have been taking a deep look at keywords for our word problems, and we have been working with arrays in our math. Scholars, I want to show you a problem today in our problem of the day, and I want to show you some tricky key words because these tricky keywords can mean that we can add or subtract. What are we going to do? We have to figure it out. So, word problems are a great way to become a detective and use our four steps to be able to solve them. You know, step number one, we're going to read the problem. Readers don't just read the words to say, to say them correctly. They read them to understand. Two, we better highlight our key words and numbers. Remember, we said that keyword is annotate. When we annotate, we make sure we take the most important parts out of something. Read the problem, annotate. Number three, it's a, it's a math problem, so we have to write an equation. That really helps us do number four. We have to do our job. What do they want us to solve? Let's take a look at today's problem because it's going to have some tricky words in here that could tell us that we're going to either add or subtract. Which one are we going to do? All right. Megan is driving 24 miles to her grandma's house. So far, she has driven 16 miles. How many more miles does Megan need to drive? Okay, so we read the problem and we're really taking some time to think about it. So I remember I get a picture in my head. I see Megan, I actually have a friend named Megan. So I'm thinking about her and I'm seeing her in her car driving to her grandmother's house. How long does she have to drive to grandma's house? Well, it's gonna, it's gonna be four miles. But if I see that she has already driven 16 miles. It's way over here. Let me get out of the way. Okay, now I want to find those keywords. I already know some numbers that I want to use. I have 24. And I have 16. Okay, scholars, I'm going to show you actually two equations because this problem can be solved in two different ways. So here we go. Megan is driving 24 miles to her grandma's house. So we already know that 24 is the total number of miles she needs to drive. That's how long it takes to grandma's house. Well, it says so far she has driven 16. Do you see that those words so far? This has already happened. So Let's finish finding our job here. How many more miles does Megan need to drive? Do you see this? How many more? That many more can tell us two things. It can tell us that we can add or we can subtract. Guess what? We can do both. So let's see how. So 24, we said, is the total number of miles. Well, we could take away how much she's already driven to tell us what's left or how many more she has. And that would be a subtraction problem. But guess what, scholars? We could also say that there's 24 miles that she needs in, to drive in total. But she already did 16, so we know that. Guess what? Scholars, when we already know the total, what is that called? It's a sum. And sums are the... They, remember, they are the answer to our addition problem. So look at, we could also do this. We could say 24 equals 16 plus something. Oh my goodness. Scholars, remember last week when we were solving unknown add-ins? I'm gonna solve it that way today, okay? So here's, let's say make that place value chart still. There are more than one, there's more than one way to solve this problem. And scholars, you're going to find that. You can solve it in, you can solve world problems in more than one way. We have two equations. We have 24 minus 16 gives us the difference of, or we could say 24 equals 16 plus some unknown added. Okay, let's see how we're going to do this now. Now, let's solve it. Let's solve it this way. Remember how we did this? When we solve for an unknown addit, what we're going to do is we're going to use the addit that we already have. You see our addit here? We already have 16. So we know that's one, two, three, four, five, six, 
and 110. We have to get to 24. So we want to get to 24. So we're going to think how many, what can we add? Well, if I add another 10 here, that's too much. 10 more than 26 is, 10 more than 26 is, no, not 26. Then 16 is 26. So that won't work. So I have to add ones. So I'm going to add my ones to get to 24. So here we go. One, oh, so I was six. So actually I'm going to say seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh-oh, wait a minute. We know something about this. When we get to ten, we circle them up and we move them. But I didn't finish. So remember, I wanted to get to 24. So I was at 16, so I said 17, 18, 19, 20. I know I'm going to circle it up there, so I'm going to leave it alone. And I'm going to come down here to finish. So I'm at 20, so I want 21, 22, 23, 24. So look at that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 is what she had to add. But that makes a total of 24. Because this here is a 10 and we're moving it over. So that gives us the sum of 24. But remember, I'm not looking for the sum when I'm looking for an unknown added. I knew that there were eight. So how many more miles does Megan need to drive? Megan needs to drive eight more miles. We can do an unknown add-in and we can add that in to figure out when we already have a sum or we can have a subtraction problem where we take the total and we subtract what has already happened. That gives us the difference. Guess what? They're the same thing. It gives us the difference of eight. All right, scholars. That was for those of you who like using unknown add-ins and you wanted to try something different. If you feel good about your subtraction and you wanna use your regrouping, go for it. That's the strategy I want you to use today. Scholars, let's think about our arrays now. Remember with an array, we know that we're creating an object or a group of objects that are in rows, rows go side to side, and columns which go up and down. So rows go side to side, columns go up and down. Remember, we can say rows are horizontal and columns are vertical. Those are our, those are our math terms. Now, scholars, today in our arrays, we're going to have a, just a total amount that's given to us. And we have to make an array. Remember, an array does not work if it's not in a rectangle shape. That means we have to have an equal amount in every row and an equal amount in every column. Okay. So what does that mean? What does it look like? Let's see this example. We're going to draw an array that has a total of or six total items or objects in it. Okay, so let me, let's, let's do this here. Let's see if this is an array. Well, I'm going to draw an array and I'm going to put one, two, three, four in my first column. Well, look guys, I'm going to put two more to make six. So do I have an array? No, that's not an array. We can't do that because look, it, it has different amounts in each row. You see how row number one has four in it and row number two has two in it? That's not an array. Arrays have to have an equal number in every row. So if this one has four and this one has two in it, that's not an array. Okay, so help me out here. I still want an array, but look it, what could I do? I'm not gonna put these two over here, but that's not six. Two and two, that's the same number in each row. But you know what? If I add a third row, I can get six because two plus two plus two equals six. And that's my equation. Two plus two plus two equals six. I get the sum of six. That's my six total objects. Scholars, guess what? There's another way that we can count these. That was if I had three rows, but what if instead of three rows, I want to look at my two columns? Well, scholars, how many are in each column now? You got it. We have three. So we'll write the equation three plus three equals six. Still the same sum. It still has six um, total items in this array. 
All right, scholars, let's try one more array together. In this array, we're gonna draw an array with 15 total items. This one's trickier, because you know what? I can see that 15 is not an even number, so I can't draw rows of two. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna start with rows of three and see what happens. I'm gonna just try it out and see if it works, because sometimes what we have to figure out here is what number in each row will actually make an array. So let's try it out. So I'm going to draw my rows of three. One, two, three. Okay, I'm gonna go all the way to 15, but remember I wanna make the same number in every row. So if there was three in the first row, I have to put three in the second row. So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, guys, it worked. So two wouldn't work because it's not, a, 15 isn't an even number, but I tried three and it did work. Okay, so let's see how many rows I have. I have one, two, three, four, five. So let's see how many are in each row. I have three in my first row, three in my second row, three in my third row, three in my fourth row, and three in my fifth row. So when I make an equation, I'm gonna have three plus three plus three plus three plus three. I'm gonna make sure there are five threes for my five rows. And we know that that equals the sum of 15. All right, scholars, when you're doing your math work today and creating your arrays, you might take some trial and error. That's what mathematicians do. We try and see what works. If it doesn't work, we try it again. So it's okay to delete once you start if you need to try another pattern. You could also try it out by putting your rows down or your columns down first like we've been doing with our other arrays. But try it out today. Let's see what arrays we can find. Have a great day.